a controversy. Why don't we talk about the elephant or, or elephants in the room? After members of the Oregon GOP decided that the best person to replace Mike Neerman, the first lawmaker to ever be expelled from Salem, would in fact just go ahead and be Mike Neerman in a move that almost feels like a loophole, but isn't. Neerman's seat got kicked out of office after every lawmaker except him voted for his expulsion. It stemmed from this video where he opened a locked door at the Capitol and led in angry right wing protesters who then fought with Capitol Police, as well as another video that was from before this that surfaced that appeared to show Neerman planning the whole thing and calling it Operation Hall Pass. He's currently under a criminal investigation for everything, and it's typically the type of thing you would imagine someone would resign over, but not Neerman. He's riding it out. It got him expelled and it left his seat wide open. Open. So on Friday night, the GOP nominated five people to be considered for that seat, for that job. And then the county commissioners near the district will appoint one of those five people. As we reported last night, Neerman was the top recommendation, but he wasn't the only recommendation. So let's take a look at the other four, starting with John Swanson. A Republican staffer in the state Senate. This is a picture from the Oregon Catalyst, a conservative blog that claimed he was instrumental in planning three Republican walkouts. A source told me, a source who was at that vote on Friday, said that when he was asked if he would have expelled Mike Neerman, he said no. Jim Bunn, a former state senator from 1987 to 1995. He was in the political world a while ago in an elected capacity. He was then in 95 elected to Congress. And this is video of Bunn in D.C. where he did serve one term. Then Mickey Garris, who is a former Dallas City councilor who made the news when people tried to recall him in 2016 for posting on Facebook that Islam is pure evil and that he would use physical violence to keep a transgender woman from using a girl's locker room at his daughter's school. These statements created a lot of backlash and created a lot of support for him. He also owns a gun shop and has a political podcast called Patriot Uprising. And I want to take a second and give you, give you a listen to the intro to that podcast. As patriots, it's our duty to rise up in a world full of darkness. Evil comes in many forms and it lurks around unexpected corners. It's time to stop wondering what will happen if it comes to war. War is already here. That episode started with his concerns of Governor Brown's COVID restrictions, where he called her the Fuhrer. Lastly, Anna Scharf, who is from a farming family. This is a post from Facebook where you can see she supports Timber Unity and described herself as a political analyst on LinkedIn. I don't think she has a podcast. So all of those people, including Neerman, will meet with the commissioners of Polk, Yamhill, Marion and Benton counties. And then those commissioners will vote to place someone in Neerman's seat, maybe Neerman. If you have some questions about this process or anything that you think we might need to add to this report, please let me know. Email us at the story at KGW.com or use Twitter in the hashtag HeyDan.